So what is the process? Okay, when what is the typical modeling process? What is the analytics process? Right? Typically, you start. Uh, you have to start at one level, but it looks like circle. What is what is the starting point for any circle? So you can start circle at any point, but usually you start at this point. So you receive customer RFP, request for proposal, or RFI, or you get some data, right? And then you draw some hypothesis. This is the basics. Hypothesis is something that you believe as true or believe as correct. Okay. something that you believe as a true or you know some something that uh, or maybe customer will tell okay for example um, if it rains nobody will buy uh, sandwiches i mean that's that's a hypothesis it could be true or it could be false nobody knows it but the whole point is to evaluate the hypothesis and give the confidence ratio on that one okay? so you draw some hypothesis and then you determine the right data source. For example, a customer may already give the data source. If he doesn't give the data source, you may have to go and look your own data source. Uh, mostly, you will know the data source, right? If you do not know, for example, um, you are trying to estimate who is going to win the elections, right? So somebody says Obama is going to win the elections, and someone someone else says uh, someone else is going to win the elections. Or in India, some parties are there, so you you. So there is a hypothesis that says some one party is going to win, and the other hypothesis says that other party is going to win. But then how do you estimate it? So the first point is determine the data source. What is the data source? In this case, this is a public data. You need to get public data, public analysis data. So one of the data sources could be social media, right? Twitter, Facebook. That is one thing. Second thing is your news channels, and third thing is you talk to actual people, right? But then. You also need to, when you say determine data source, you also need to uh, understand how much of data you really need to act to correctly analyze the problem. How much, how much data is, you know, uh, sufficient data? How do you decide that? That depends. For example, uh, in case of election, winning the election, predicting who is going to win the election, just sampling 10 or 20 people will not help you. Right? You may have to sample a reasonably millions of people at least to come up with some accuracy. Right? On the other hand, um, to, in the healthcare, you may not have that kind of opportunity or luxury to sample hundreds of people before coming up with some drug. Right? So, what I am trying to highlight here is sometimes you may get enough people or enough data to validate the hypothesis. Sometimes you may not, and sometimes you may not even need the uh, so much of data. Also, right? The mathematical values in itself could be worth. For example, you get some high quality data, and you don't uh, need uh, additional data. Um, what are some of the examples like that? For example, where you small data is enough. Okay, I'll leave it to you. Maybe somebody can come up with some example. But trust me, you know, sometimes you don't need data. If you can get some good sample data, you don't need more data. But sometimes quality doesn't matter. The quantity always matters. For example, population majority, you have to say. Okay, and then out of the data, you need to extract what is needed. What is needed in the sense attributes. So, you if you take population data, you will get so much of uh, so many attributes like high income low income uh, what is the family size uh, how many people are old how many what is the age how many people are uh, working in the remote site in the sense on site off site and how many people are really living here how many nris are there what is the coverage of hospitals what is the coverage of uh, airport to that uh, to the to their location to their base etc so, so so many attributes you you will see so many attributes but you don't need so many attributes you may not need the attributes for this uh, hypothesis. So, for example, uh, high income, low income, etc. They may not be. Uh, they may not be real contributing factor in determining who is going to win. Or maybe they can. You know, it it depends upon how you look at it. But certainly, age. How many people are uh, uh, beyond 18? How many people are below 18? Is going to make a difference because. 
that will give you a direct count of how many people are going to vote. Right? So you need to extract what are the relevant attributes. And one thing I want to tell you is, trust me, many times you may throw away certain attributes are useless or you may include certain attributes are useful. And uh, in most of the scenarios, these two could be wrong. You can go wrong either by including wrong attributes or by excluding right attributes. So that is that is the that is the reason why analytics is so difficult. I mean, I mean, you may ask that uh, okay, uh, statistics has been around for so many years. Why is that there is no a rigorous process? Why is that people have to rely upon a certain random process because of all these things, right? You don't have perfect valid data sources. You don't. You cannot extract what is the right attribute or not. And then once you extract it, you have to massage this tool to fit the tool because not all tools can accept all data. For example, certain tools accept only CSV data. Certain tools accept only Excel data, etc. Right? So you have to modify that data into that. So lack of tools is another problem. Right? And then you run the analysis. When you say run the analysis, you are talking about so many things. You have to run the analysis using many techniques. Which technique to use? You may not come up with the right technique. Right? And then conclusions. So these analysis, they give, they, what, what is the output they give? They give numbers. Right? At the end of the day, machines are all about numbers. So they give numbers. So it is up to you to to derive conclusions out of those numbers, to make sense out of those numbers. So you have to conclude it. For example, it says 10%. What does 10% mean? 20%. What does 20% mean? Does it mean uh, mean in sense, not uh, not statistical mean? Uh, what what is the meaning of 10%? What is the meaning of 20%? So it is up to you. And it may give you some correlation like saying that, okay, attribute A is related to attribute B. Okay. It is up to you whether it, whether it makes sense or not to to actually enforce that uh, relation. Right. I'm going to give one good example after this after this slide is complete. But you see, so the uh, the point here is you have to draw conclusions. So now you may go wrong in drawing conclusions. You may come up with the wrong conclusions, and then you have to implement the actual conclusions to see the uh, to see the uh, value. To see the effect in the business. For example, it may say it may recommend your output. Your conclusion could be that okay, if you sell um, if you sell umbrellas on the rainy day, you may increase the business revenue. Okay, that is your conclusion. Okay, after running the analysis, you derive that okay, people tend to buy umbrellas in the rainy season. Let us say that is your uh, conclusion. Then you you have to actually implement that conclusion, saying that you make the umbrellas available in the shop. Right? That is implementation. But then there are many manageable problems which may not which may not implement it correct. There are many manageable problems because the moment statistics give some uh, result, implementation could go wrong in many ways. And then after implementing it, you have to actually monitor whether, whether it is really giving the effect or not, whether people are really buying the umbrellas or not. So that is monitoring the effect. You monitor the progress and you sustain it. Okay, That completes the circuit. But then monitoring may also go wrong because not many companies may want to invest on uh, how their uh, recent changes are implemented. So you can go right or you can go wrong. This is one of the reasons why, despite very beautiful techniques, very beautiful techniques, despite so many numerous uh, statistical and data mining techniques, things are not the way they should be. Okay? So if you ask me, uh, OK, statistics has been around for may more than one century. Why are, now, why are people still struggling to make sense out of it? So there are so many opportunities to make it right which equally presents equal opportunities to make it wrong. Okay? One good example I can give you is, for example, 
uh, you can search for this one. It's a good article. I don't know if uh, if it is still there. Correlation does not uh, mean causation, right? It's a very good article. My suggestion is uh, please read it. Uh, that gives you more in insight into how analysts can go wrong, you know, because at the end of the day, it is a human being who who is deciding. You see, up to this part, up to this part, this is a computer, this is a machine running analysis. But from this point onwards, this is human beings. You have to draw conclusions, you have to implement results, you have to monitor the progress. And here also, you have to determine the data source, you have to extract it, and then you have to message. So this machine part is only up to this part, this triangle. So human beings has to complete all our circles. They can go wrong in any of the phases. Okay, you have to remember that. So when you are presenting the solutions, never be too uh, confident of the solutions. That's what I am trying to put across. So my suggestion is, please uh, try to read this. There are very good articles on this one. Uh, 